um, what do we need to do as a business to grow our you know, digital presence, our TV presence, and, and all that kind of information. And the way we do it is by various projects. We use market research. We go out, we actually speak to fans, we speak to sports fans. We speak hey, to you people. interviewed like thousands of fans, um, didn't you? I mean, we've literally probably over last year probably done 100,000 interviews across all our research studies. This is Entrepreneurs the Playbook where I give you access each week to the world's greatest athletes and executives about their personal and professional playbook and what has made them champions on and off the field. This is The Playbook. Dave Meltzer here with Entrepreneur The Playbook and I have a special guest, fresh off the airplane, injured but still capable, Matt Roberts with Formula One. Nice Good to see you. Now Matt, you have a new position with Formula One it's yeah. the head of global marketing or head of global research. research. Yeah. Tell, it, one of the most common questions that entrepreneurs ask me, uh, you know, I ran the most notable sports agency in the world, uh, did the movie Jerry Maguire after Lee, who I the CEO of, you know, everybody thinks that in order to work in sports, you have to, you know, literally work for a team, a league, an organization, be a sports agent, but there's so many other jobs in sports. Yeah. Explain to us what a uh, head of global research does. Yeah. So yeah, my job is one of the more bizarre, you know, not yeah. bizarre, but one of the, like abnormal jobs in sports. So we very much work behind the scenes. We're the kind of we're the team that are out there. We're trying to understand how many fans we've got for that particular sport. And what kind of what's the level of engagement of those fans? Who are the avid fans? Who are the casual fans? How do we turn those casual fans into avid fans? Um, you know, how many people are watching on our TV coverage? How many people are consuming our digital products? Um, what do we need to do as a business to grow our, you know, our digital presence, our TV presence, and, and all that kind of information. And the way we do it is by various projects. We use market research. We go out, we actually speak to fans, we speak to sports fans. We speak hey, to you interviewed people. like thousands of fans, um, didn't you? I mean, we've literally probably over the last year probably done 100,000 interviews across all our research studies. Wow. Sports fans, F1 fans, non-F1 fans. Uh, just really understanding their motivations, their barriers, their triggers, and, and the way they behave. Um, we also buy in data and, and analyze data from, you know, we buy in TV data, we'll, and then we can look at the demographics of those TV data and understand who's watching, have, have those numbers gone up. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good world. It's also a, a new world for Formula One. Before 2017, uh, F1 never used this data. They had a few odd pockets of data reports there, but we never, ever, ever um, bought in market research. We didn't know anything about our fans. We didn't know what their motivations were. Besides they were rich. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, what I like about a good yeah. F1 fan. Well, yeah. well, the, 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 the most affluent crowd. Yeah. Well, the irony, I mean, they, they, we, we do over-index on high income, but we do have yeah. a lot of people who, you know, we, we have people of all incomes who are yeah. F1 fans. It's not just about the high yeah. income. When I was and, broke, I was yeah. a huge F1 fan. Yeah. So. <laughs> and we do think, yeah, we, one problem we had before, we just were serving the avid fans. We're just thinking about that hardcore group of fans are not that kind of huge band of casual fans out there who felt like they weren't being served by the sports. That's what we're trying to do now. One of the things that I find really interesting that you may be able to help me with is that I don't think that that the viewership numbers, and this is true with the NFL too, yeah. our biggest sport in America, are truly indicative of how many fans are out there because I don't think currently there's any way of truly tracking yeah. the true digital fan. Yeah. And, I, and I think we're losing out because I think the millennials carry so much weight and viewership, but yet I'm a firm believer from what I do, I could call it the stage theory, or even this here, yeah. We, we could have, uh, like out, I was on the main stage, thousands of people watching me and Victor Cruz, or nobody really watching yeah, you and I, exactly. but this conversation may interest more people. So out of the 3.2 billion people on the internet, we may get 4 million people watching this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is there currently a true way to track how many fans are online? It's a really tough one. I mean, that's the, it's the poison chalice of my industry. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I remember back. 10 years ago, we were talking about, oh, very soon we're going to have this single source metric where we can add TV and digital together. We're still not there. Um, yeah. Yeah, in the UK, Barb, for example, they, they've they been having this project, Dovetail, which is about combining TV and digital, but it's been pushed back year after year after year. It's supposed to be done in 2011. It's now 2018. <laughs> yeah. It's still not out there. Um, it's like a voice uh, VR, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All, for, since we've been young, Dragon Dictate, yeah, Dragon Dictate. We have no IVRs that are truly yeah. accurate. Well, well, you problem, thought we would have voice recognition like this. We, you thought, I mean, the problem is that you already, we know your TV viewing if you're on our panel, because you're there, you're watching. Yeah. You've got 
an iPhone or a phone, you've got an iPhone, you've got an iPad, you've got other devices. How do we know you're all the same person? And that, that's the challenge. It's, yeah. You've got a laptop, you've got multiple ways now of going online and watching stuff and we just don't know it's all the same person we might yes there's cookies out there but again they can't identify if you're the same person on the phone or on a laptop right so it's it's a real challenging one i'm not sure anyone's got the answer yet um but all we know at f1 is that again you're right i mean our tv reach last year was about three five two million um yet when we look at all the research around how many fans we have we have about 500 million fans and a lot of that gap that delta a lot of it is because people are consuming digital only and a lot of the younger people they won't watch on TV right. they'll be looking for bite sized chunks online they'll be watching five minute highlight clips but they may never watch a race over the year but they might watch every five minute highlight clips for all the races and we've got a lot of people out there who will be digital only fans and not consuming especially that younger generation and I think too the younger generation just because they only watch a bite sized amount of content yeah, yeah. they're still avid fans oh, yeah, yeah. and they still utilize different methodologies to find information so um, whether it's you know the f1 gaming where they're learning about all the drivers the different cars in fact i find that via esports and e-gaming that a lot of avid sports fans know more than your tv uh, viewer yeah, yeah. <laughs> because the integration between the data the, and the access to information combined with the gaming, combined with the bite-sized video of either live or repurposed yeah. content, adds an extraordinary experience that a lot of people in my generation yeah. don't understand. Well, they're real in information hunters. They're behind the scenes. They're, yeah, they watch the bite-sized chunk, but they're looking across all social media, what people are talking about in the sport, what's the latest gossip, what's the latest news. Yeah, they're on every website looking yeah. up all the news from different angles and how is this website writing about it, how is this website writing about it. And the older kind of fan, the purist who's been a fan for 20 years, they're just TV only. And they only get from that two hour Sunday afternoon. That's sure. They get out of the sport. So one of the challenges true of live events, which you face, yeah. uh, it's interesting because F1, you've always had a different type of challenge because it's so spread out of having a live fan. Uh, but the integration, I always say that people that when they go to a live event, they want to have the comforts of their home. Yeah. They want to have the access to the information, everything like they do at home. But then the people at home want to have the energy of being there live. Yes. And I don't think either can be duplicated. What kind of things can you do in F1 to create ubiquity between the two different yeah. types of mediums? So, I mean, I, th I think that's a really interesting point. I think F1, it's a very visceral sport. You need to hear it. Yeah, feel it. Smell it. <laughs> yeah. It. And I think sometimes on TV that, that doesn't come out. I mean, I was a casual fan for years, probably before I joined F1, and I did not know how fast these cars were going, the noise they were making, the, 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 the smell of these cars. The, uh, and the other thing I didn't really realize was that you've got these drivers who the are risk. pushing themselves to the absolute limit. Cre that's what I, possible, first you know? time I went, I was like, oh yeah. my God, this yeah. is like suicidal. I mean, they're collapsing out of the cars. They, you know, the helmet is so heavy. I mean, the, the, these yeah. guys have to wear. But, uh, you know, an example, so what we do this year now, one thing that, that kind of try and get to that kind of on the edge aspect, that visceral aspect is to get interviews with the drivers the minute the race finishes. So you might have seen this year that um, as cars are parking up after the race, the, the TV interviewers yeah. there asking them questions to try and show that how exhausted these guys are, trying to show that, that sense of the sport. The other yeah, thing that we're trying to do at F1 is bring those camera angles much closer. Yeah. So before, in the olden days, under the old regime, you'd have these very wide camera angles to get as many logos in as possible for our keep our sponsors happy. Yeah. Now we're in much closer from the car, really showing how fast that car is going and trying to show the TV fan at home the kind of what, what's happening there on the track. So I think that's that's one thing. Then I think um, for the people at the races, you've got a whole new development. There's things like fan vision now. You can buy like these devices at races to see what's yeah. going on with the wider race. We're trying to make sure there's more screens around the race. There's F1 radio where you can get commentaries. So we're really trying to make sure people at the race can can see what's going on, and you're not just stuck at one bit where a car goes boom, boom. Right. You know, the old trying, school. Yeah. So there, there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes trying to improve both experiences. I well, I would think that AR and VR. I know, for example, you know, I'm a traditional stick and ball type yeah. of sports guy, but you know, one of the biggest things in the stadium right now is that eventually with AR and VR, you could sit 
and pick and choose during the play. If if a team's coming this way, you can pick the view from this seat, yeah, yeah. the best seat in the house, no matter where you're sitting. Where you are, yeah. But you're still feeling the energy. You still can stand up. You know, yeah. I would think with F1, that, that same technology, you could you could literally fo follow a car, uh, you know, all the way around, or have a views and you know catch oh, yeah, up. Just have your one view. And, yeah. Have you seen stuff like that being um, utilized yeah, already I with multi cameras? I, mean, I, I think our digital team are exploring, uh, yeah. and, and as you can imagine, they're being approached by multiple companies who can yeah. do this. So I think they're just trying to work out, you know, what's the best solution and how we can roll that out. And I think there will be, as you know. This year, I think, was very much about it, and last year were the kind of two foundation years. You remember, before 2017, we didn't even have, have a, a, like, a social media like, a, a Crazy. following. We didn't have anything out on social yeah, media. No data, no social uh, media. Yeah, and you know, the website was pretty basic. Everything's being relaunched. Obviously, we're, we're launching F1 TV, yeah. the OTT proposition as well. Yeah, we're just trying to get the basics in place at the moment. And then, That's then awesome. we'll get the other stuff on, on, on top, I think. But we will be there, I think. We're just we're playing catch up at the moment. But we're, we're catching up quickly. But you have, you know, I'm a big firm believer of content. I believe good content, no matter what the mediums are, how it changes. That's why Disney has lasted throughout the years, right? If you go on to YouTube, the Mickey Mouse Club has 470 million views. It's still a mouse, right? But it's, it's good content. You guys have great content. Out of all the research that you've done, what's the most surprising thing that you've learned so far? Um, I mean, a lot of it kind of comes from the fact that we probably had this image of F1 fans as being very much an older man, sort of purist, someone who has been watching the sport for 20 years. But what really amazed us was how many younger fans there are, which probably talked about a minute yeah. ago. Um, in turn, especially in markets like China and the US, it's, we skew much younger there than the average sports fan. They're, they're, yeah, these new markets, there's a real, a real opportunity there. And in those markets as well, it, wasn't about the TV coverage, it was about that extra stuff we just talked about, social, digital. Gaming. Uh, gaming, yeah. Yeah, I think the F1 um, games are... Esports, actually, last, I think, yeah, last night was the esports draft. I haven't caught up yeah. there yet, so I don't know what's going on. I've invested but, in my first um, esport team, oh, yeah. so <laughs> I'm all over that. So, I mean, it, it, it was... We, we had to bust a lot of myths in this year that you know, F1 fans were older men, they were dying out. But actually, no, there's a lot of younger fans out there in these emerging markets. So it's a great opportunity. Uh, but challenge for us, I guess, is to how do we appeal to those kind of younger fans that without still alienating losing. those older traditionalists? In Welcome Europe, to the world of sports, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> Isn't that great? Because yeah, we're in the World Cup, and obviously England's in the World Cup. Yeah, and yeah. I think they, you know, we had some heads of FIFA, I've had World Cup people. You know, Brandy Chastain and Hope Solo's here, but they face the same challenge, right? And there's in baseball in America. Another last question. All right. You know, F1 has a great legacy, and I know you're re-engineering that yeah. legacy, as you said. What legacy, you know, in, in the brand side of things, do you think F1 wants to leave on sports? Yeah, I, I, I think we we want to not just be a sports brand, a car brand. I think we want to grow our brand into a kind of a, a, a sports entertainment brand. And obviously, you know, yeah. um, my manager, my boss, uh, Sean Bratches, that's what he did at ESPN. Yep. And that was his legacy at ESPN. And I think we, we want to get close They could use them back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they could do. Yeah. Um, but we want to be able to um, yeah, have these events that it's not just about, and I was at Silverstone at the weekend, and it's an amazing event. I mean, it's not just about the, the, the race. Yes, the race goes on for two hours, but people are there for eight hours. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's mega stores, there's there's activations. There's, yeah. uh, they can do their own pit stop. They can do, um, you know, they can test their reflexes. Like sit a in a car. You can sit in a yeah. car, you take a photo. And these guys love it. I mean, and we want to turn it into kind of an entertainment brand that people go to. You could go as a peripheral fan. You're not a huge F1 fan, but you'll go and you'll have the best day. Which I, I plan on doing and come and visit you. you well, just let, let me know and we'll get you some tickets. I would love yeah. it. Well, anyway, this is Dave Meltzer. Uh, we're here with Matt Roberts, the head of global research for F1 on Entrepreneur, the playbook. Perfect.